This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Full Sail. Full Sail University offers associates, bachelors, and master's degrees designed for the world of filmmaking, music, gaming, art, and tech. Offered both online and on campus, these programs are accelerated so you can earn your degree in half the time and using the same tools found in the industry. Full Sail grads have gone on to do big things, mixing hit records, working on major films, winning awards, and more. And alumni are always able to come back and audit classes throughout their careers while receiving lifetime support. To learn about Full Sail's entertainment, media, art, and technology programs, as well as potential scholarship opportunities, visit fullsail.edu slash deathbattle. That's fullsail.edu slash deathbattle. Steven Universe, a super-powered half-human, half-gem teenager. And Star Butterfly, wild child princess from another dimension. They've both struggled with their responsibilities to save the world, but when pitted against each other, whose heroics will triumph? He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. The Diamond Authority was an alien superpower set on conquering the universe for their own gain. They're literally diamonds, like shiny alien rock people. As the most powerful of the gems, the diamonds led armies of lesser gems, including pearls, amethysts, and others, to prepare planets for destruction by the Authority. These armies were trusted to obey. But they had an enemy rock person, Rose Quartz. She'd been living on Earth and really liked the place, so she was leading her own group of gems in rebellion, the Crystal Gems. To which the three diamonds of the Authority responded by trying to destroy every gem left on Earth. Uh, that sounds like overkill, but in a huge blast of light, every gem was corrupted or destroyed. Except for Rose and her closest gems, a garnet and pearl. She'd managed to defend them all with her shield. Given the light emanating from this attack and its distance, we can estimate it to be over 843 million tenajoules per second of energy. Jewels? More like jewels, am I right? Uh, that's what I said? No, like with the W. Uh, never mind. Well, now with the diamonds rebuffed, Rose was able to settle down, and she even met a human she got along with, Greg Universe. What a badass. I, I wish my last name was Universe. They got along so well that one thing led to another, and, uh, whoops. Rose had to give up her body so their son could be born. True to his heritage, Steven has many gem-related powers. Since when Rose gave up her body to create him, she effectively gave him all of her power as well, including her own gem. And while Steven's a stalwart pacifist, this led to him following in her footsteps to defend Earth from the diamonds when they inevitably return. But he's got plenty of ways to defend himself and the others. He can create shields and bubbles to protect from different attacks, use bubbles to teleport things away, and shapeshift to get bigger. He can also control his personal gravity to float or jump as high as he wants. And he can even fuse with other gems, or sometimes a human. Huh. I wonder what a fusion between us would look like. Uh, fusions tend to result in a more powerful entity than the sum of its parts, but I'm not sure that would happen. Yeah, you're right. You wouldn't be able to handle it. Sure. Anyway, as a gem, Steven is much stronger than an average child. While he doesn't look for conflict, conflict always seems to find him. Like when he's taken on huge monsters or pushed through the G-forces of faster than light travel. And when he's in a fight, he combines that crazy strength with awesome speed and agility. He can outrun an alien security system with electric fire and ice attacks, and he's dodged lasers. Even if he can't get away in time, Steven survived an entire temple exploding and taking hits from a bunch of gems, which is huge. I mean, Garnet once punched so hard she could split a mountain. Another gem he's on par with, Lapis, telekinetically lifted the entire ocean into the atmosphere. Boomstick, do you know how heavy the ocean is? No, do you know how heavy the ocean is? The effort required for that would be anywhere from 92 petatons to over 10 zettatons of TNT. Man, that's a lot of water. His bubble and shield are also way stronger than they look, since they can defend against attacks from the diamonds themselves. Not even Steven's spit could have helped with that attack. Oh, if you haven't heard, his spit can heal people. His saliva can even give plants, like fruit, humanoid form. Just spitting out seeds from a watermelon has gotten Steven in quite a bind before. <laughs> That's not gonna pop up and attack me, is it? No, Boomstick, regular watermelons don't attack people. But depending on Steven's emotional state, he has varying control over his 
plant-based life form. You gonna eat that? Aside from his spit, Steven's tears have brought people back from the dead. They just turn pink and have powers of their own after. It's weird. Despite not being one to pursue conflict, Steven's been stuck for a while making the best of carrying on Rose's duty. So his kindness and feelings of responsibility for those around him push him to use those healing abilities whenever he can. He can even mend himself with accelerated healing that lets him fix fractures and minor injuries nearly immediately. And when Steven's knocked out, he can leave his physical body, sort of like a ghost. The drawback is he can't physically interact with anything while he's projecting. But when Steven goes to sleep normally, he can possess other people's bodies. Good luck trying to fall asleep in a fight, though. I've tried. But protecting the Earth wasn't the only surprise Steven's mother left for him. As it turns out, she was never actually Quartz at all. She was, in fact, Pink Diamond, one of the heads of the Diamond Authority. What? Despite being sent to Earth to conquer it, she fell in love with the planet, which led her to give up her title and transform into Rose Quartz. All of this was withheld from Steven for most of his life, as Pearl worried how the truth might change him. Oh, believe me, parental trauma will take a toll on anyone's mental state. And when Steven gets too overwhelmed, he taps into his latent diamond abilities, making everything way stronger and way killier. In this, his pink state, he's so fast his perception of time slows to a crawl. His bubble and shield become hexagonal and strong enough to crush other gems. Like when he lost control of his emotions in a fight with Jasper and killed her. He did bring her back to life with his super tears, but that kind of stuff made him think he was a monster, and he basically turned into a pink state Godzilla. But this wasn't Steven hulking out all of a sudden. It was the result of a full emotional breakdown after years of stress and trauma. Luckily, his friends came in clutch and it worked out okay. But he still risks becoming a monster if he's ever completely emotionally broken. With the support of the Crystal Gems, his dad, and his friends, Steven managed to work through his personal issues, so hopefully he's not faced with becoming a monster ever again. So that's one less monster to worry about, Tokyo. And since Monster Steven has the same power as his pink state, just with absolutely no control, Steven's still powerful enough to take on anything in his way. Of course, if it was up to Steven Universe, everyone would just be friends. Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, and Steven! When Marco met the new exchange student at his school, he thought he was just making a new friend from a different place. And he definitely didn't think she'd be a magical princess who'd drag him along for all of her crazy adventures. This girl from Muni Mew what? was a little weird and a little wild, and on top of bringing magic to Earth, she might have brought along a few extras as well. This displaced heir to the throne and defender against monsters was none other than Star Butterfly. She may have been backed up by generations of magic users before her, and super strong in her own right, but Star wasn't the perfect princess. She would have been sent to the terrifying and personality-draining St. Olga's School for Wayward Princesses, but luckily, Star's parents took one look at that place and decided, no way, she's going to Earth instead. You know, Earth really isn't the best place for her to be practicing magic. We're not used to people casually casting spells here. What'll humans say? Well, since Star is a Mewman... What the f*** is a Mewman? Uh, that's what the people of Muni are called. She's already superhuman compared to her peers on Earth. She survived a blast that leveled the top of Castle Muni, and can use her wings to help her get out of the way in a pinch. What, those tiny things? There's no way she can actually fly with them. At least she can make a bubble around herself to defend against attacks. Her butterfly heritage also grants her the Magic Instruction Book. This spell book is incredibly important, as it contains spells created by all the magical rulers of Muni that came before her. And she creates her own spells too, like Cupcake Blast, which fires a beam filled with cupcakes. Okay, half of these spells don't make any sense. Jelly Bean Hallucination Mist? Starfish Tsunami? What the hell are these names? I want a Jelly Bean Hallucination Mist. I feel like you could, you'd pay for that like a high-end sauna. Well, they're kind of self-explanatory. Creating her own spells does mean they can pretty much be anything. Take one of her summons, for example, which are effectively creatures reliant on magic to survive. So what happens when you combine unicorns, stampedes, and war? 
Oh, I know this one! Warnicorn Stampede! Now I get where Spider with a top hat came from! That spider is one of Star's self-professed most powerful summons, with his own minigun to boot. So naturally, she can kick monsters' butts with her spells thanks to her magical wand. But she better watch out, because a lot of those monsters want to use it for themselves. Her wand combined with her training means she has some incredible destructive power. She's blasted apart walls, temples, and a throne room. Her mother even said her wand could blow up a universe, and one of her ancestors did exactly that. Yeah, Star's ancestor Skywind wanted to make something explode one day. So, why not an entire dimension? And remember that book we mentioned earlier? Skywind recorded her experience specifically so her successors would know what to do if they also wanted to destroy a dimension. So, Star should be able to do this, since she's known to be an incredibly strong princess on top of being the heir to the Butterfly Spellbook. Speaking of destroying things, her thermonuclear butterfly blast has wrecked a house, and according to Star, her mega explosive crystal laser is powerful enough to obliterate planets. But she just likes to use it to play with cats like a laser pointer. Star has spells for more than just destruction though, like her bunny rabbit blast which she's used to catch up to cars, and one of the monsters she's fought, Meteora, has deflected lightning. Being able to fight on par with Meteora means Star's able to reach speeds over Mach 1000. But if all that wasn't enough for you, once Star went through Muberty, oh, you gotta be kidding me. She learned how to access and control her far more powerful Butterfly 4. Now that's a set of wings. I just wish peering into her eyes wasn't like peering into the nine layers of hell. It's obviously a stand-in for puberty. Star compared the process of attaining it to, quote, suddenly looking at boys as if they were made of bacon, like you've never eaten it in your life, and all you want to eat is bacon. So what you're saying is if I eat enough bacon, I can get magical powers? Anyway, through her time in various dimensions, fighting monsters and defending her friends, Star's become strong enough on her own that she no longer needs her wand. In fact, her wand only ever served as training wheels to help her harness this magic herself. Soon enough though, she realized monsters weren't actually the bad guys, so she started to fight for them instead of against them. This wasn't a popular decision with humans, but Star knew it was the right choice and followed through. Unfortunately, the fighting continued, and Star realized in order to truly quell the conflict, she needed to fight magic itself. So her mother, her great whatever grandmother, and Meteora all banded together to cast the Whispering Spell in the realm of magic. This spell is designed to silence or end magic, and when cast within the realm of magic, it destroyed magic itself. All of it. But doesn't that mean she killed all the magical creatures across the different dimensions because they need magic to survive? Yeah, we don't talk about that. Uh, well, after destroying magic and every magical creature in existence, Star was finally able to bring peace to Muni. Star had a lot of growing up to do when she was sent to Earth, but she learned to control her powers and led her country to peace. Mm, mostly. Now, she's truly grown from her chrysalis into a butterfly. Who's ready for a bloody, bloody bloodbath? <laughs> all right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. But before we do, it's time to talk about our sponsors. I'd like to take a moment to wish friends of the show, Adam and Eve, a very happy birthday. What are they, like 6,000 years old? Not that, Adam and Eve. I'm talking about the upscale adult boutique. I knew that. Anyway, it's Adam and Eve's 50th birthday, and in celebration, they've got one heck of a deal for you. Head on over to adamandeve.com and use the code BATTLE at checkout to get almost any one item for 50% off. Though to be honest, they have so many items available, it might be difficult to pick just one. If it's their birthday, shouldn't we be the ones giving them a gift? They'll also give you 10 free gifts with your order. That's a gift for him, a gift for her, a gift for the both of you, six movies, and free shipping. But you'll only get all that if you use the code BATTLE at checkout at adamneve.com. So don't wait until you're as old as Adam and Eve. Use the code BATTLE, that's B-A-T-T-L-E, BATTLE, at checkout at adamneve.com. And thanks so much to Adam and Eve for supporting the show. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Wait, sorry. Wait.
Wait, I can fix it. <laughs> oh. Okay, I think I have a better idea. <laughs> wow, grumpy much. I'll cheer you up. Huh? Um, stop, please. Take your time. Hey, check this out. Ow. Huh? That was rude. What's wrong with you? Just. Leave me alone! <laughs> More cries! See you huh? later, Pinky! She thought she won there. Steven definitely had a better sandcastle. With Steven's strength and healing abilities, Star was definitely between a gem and a hard place initially. And when Steven went pink, made it a whole lot tougher on her. And since Steven was an alien gem and not technically magic, Star's whispering spell couldn't touch him. But she still had the advantage in the end. Steven was physically superior, at least to Star's everyday appearance. Star could survive explosions worth a few dozen tons of TNT, but he could match Garnet's mountain-busting might. However, everyone knows this matchup would rarely ever resolve in fisticuffs. Even with how out there some of Steven's powers were, the sheer versatility of Star's magic was simply not something he was equipped to outmaneuver or overpower. Sure, his laser feats mean he was faster than Star in her lightning feats, but Star's butterfly form and transportation magic meant she had plenty of ways to work around that. Not to mention, she mastered her super-powered bug form while Steven never mastered Pink State. And she didn't even need her wand to go full power, so disarming her meant Jack Squat. It is possible Steven could match the power of the Diamond Trio, since Pink Diamond was able to defend against them alone. 843 million tenajoules, or about two tenatons of TNT, is certainly nothing to scoff at. But Star had spells that could destroy a whole planet, and probably even a universe. Pun intended. She could basically one-up any level of power Steven tried to throw at her, even if he did go full pink monster mode. Steven was pushed to the limit and gave it his best, but Star's raw power and her versatile spellcasting were impossible to beat. But her fly on home, Star, you've had a gem you would win. The winner is Star Butterfly. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned, we'll be jumping into the next matchup next week. But you can always get more Death Battle right now by clicking one of those boxes right over there and by downloading the battle music linked down below.